From the survival of wild turkeys to the life cycle of cranberries and sweet potatoes, weather conditions have a big impact on traditional Thanksgiving Day fixings. Let's start with turkeys. Contrary to a popular misconception, they can fly, but not very far, maybe an eighth of a mile if they beat their wings continuously, and gliding might allow them to travel perhaps a mile. But this limited flight distance means the turkeys don't migrate, and so they have to deal with winter weather. Indeed, wild turkeys live year-round in some of the coldest parts of the United States, including the Northeast and Midwest, and are able to survive sub-zero temperatures. To combat the worst winter has to offer, turkeys often gather in roosting areas for up to two weeks, losing as much as 40% of their body weight. A bigger challenge for wild turkeys in winter is snow. Turkeys eat all sorts of ground forage, including seeds, grains, and small bits of vegetation. But as snow piles up, it's hard for them to get to the food. Soft, powdery snow also makes it tougher for turkeys to get around, so they generally wait it out in roosts until snow crusts over or melts. Most wild turkeys make it through winter with survival rates of 70% or higher during mild or average winters and around 60% in harsh winters, more than enough to maintain healthy breeding populations. Continuing around the Thanksgiving Day table, let's talk cranberries, one of only three fruits that are native to North America. The other two are the blueberry and the Concord grape. Cranberries grow on long-running vines in bogs, wetlands that provide a unique habitat with acidic water and special soil with layers of sand and decaying matter, or in similar man-made wetlands. Native Americans had several names for cranberries, but early German and Dutch settlers called them craneberries because the flowers look a lot like the head and bill of a crane. Today, Wisconsin accounts for more than half of U.S. cranberry production, with Massachusetts producing about a quarter. In early summer, the cranberry's pink flower blooms are pollinated by bees and fruits begin to develop, ready to harvest by September or October. Typically in midwinter, growers flood their bogs with water, freezing and insulating any new buds until nature intervenes with warmer weather and the cycle can start all over again. Finally, how about those sweet potatoes? Here's a plant that does not tolerate frost. It can damage the vines and roots, and cold soils can reduce the potato's ability to keep well in storage after harvest. Sweet potatoes generally require a minimum frost-free period of four to five months, though a 90-day variety called Georgia Jet can be grown all the way to the Canadian border. Commercial production in the U.S. is confined to a few states, with North Carolina topping the list and California second. In fact, New Jersey is the northernmost state that reports significant commercial production of sweet potatoes. Maybe some of those will make their way to your table tomorrow. I wish you and yours a very happy Thanksgiving. Fred is back with the extended forecast next.